Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be going through average high temperatures from uh, week 3's practice problems. So what are the learning goals for this practice problem? We want to practice using structs and also understand how structs work. And we also want to practice applying the sorting algorithms that we uh, learned from the week 3's lecture. So what do we have to do in this practice problem? We are given a number of um, temperature structures and then each of these structures uh, has two has two variables inside of it uh, and they are city and temperature and so each of these cities have a dedicated temperature and what we have to do in our program is basically sort all of these um, cities based on temperature so the first element of the structure is going to be phoenix the second element of the structure is going to be a las vegas and so on right because uh, Phoenix and Las Vegas has the highest temperature and we have to sort uh, the cities based on descending order based on uh, the temperature they are currently on. And so in this practice problem, they want us to make use of a big O of N squared sorting algorithm, possibly bubble sort, selection sort or insertion sort. Uh, in this walkthrough, I'll be going through bubble sort and selection sort. Um, I'm not sure why they mentioned insertion sort because they didn't really teach us um, in the lessons but if you guys are interested you guys can look into it yourself in this video I'll be just going through bubble sort and selection sort so let's get started to understand how bubble sort works uh, you guys can just watch the lecture much of the lecture uh, discusses how bubble sort works and also how to implement bubble sort and also Doug Lloyd has a short on bubble sort in which he explains in more detail uh, and also a summary of the lesson on bubble sort and so this is the pseudocode so just a quick uh, rundown of how bubble sort work is that we have a swap counter that is initially set to zero and then we basically loop through all of the items in the array and um, we are checking um, the adjacent arrays uh, so for example in our scenario we want the highest temperature temps structures to be all the way at the front and the lowest temperature structs to be all the way at the back. So we are checking um, the left one and then we are checking the right one. Um, so for example, so for example, uh, if you guys look into uh, my iPad, you guys can see that our temps array is just looking something like this. Basically, we have the first index, the second index, the third index, the fourth index, the fifth index, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, yeah and that's about it so this is the 10 uh, temperature structs that we have and each of this uh, have a city and the temperature right so the city for example in the very first struct is Austin so it's Austin and then the temperature is 97 and then for the second struct is gonna be uh, it has uh, variables of city and temp again and it is Boston and 82 right and then same for all the other items in this array as well so what we want to do in bubble sort is that we want to uh, track we want to be tracking 0 and 1 right and then we want to be seeing the temperature dot temp for both and if for example dot temp for 0 uh, for, if, for example, the dot temp for the very next item is greater, so for example, in our scenario, uh, Boston is 82 degrees and Austin is 97 degrees. So we are not going to make the swap. But, for example, if you're taking a look at the 7th index and the 8th index, we have uh, New York and Phoenix. And then we are actually checking for an if condition. And in this scenario, uh, we can see that Phoenix has a temperature of 107 degrees and New York has a temperature of 85 degrees. And in this situation, we want to make the swap, right? So once we make the swap, we will be increasing the counter. So counter uh, plus plus, all right? So let me just write the code right now and, and hopefully after writing the code, uh, the concept of bubble sort and how to code it out solidifies um, in your um, in your head so let's get started first and foremost we want to have a swap counter so for example let me just name it counter and we want to set it to any number besides zero and I'll go into more detail on why that is 
in just a bit. And then we want to check while counter is equals to zero. So if we loop the entire array and we don't make any swaps, we know that uh, the entire array is already sorted, right? So now we want to check if a sort is necessary, uh, a swap is necessary. So how we do that is to use a for loop to iterate through uh, all of the items in the array. Uh, num cities i plus plus. So here what we want to do is we want to uh, check the item 0 with the item 1 and then the item 1 with the item 2 and then the item 2 with the num item 3 all the way until the item uh, 8 to the item 9, right? So how we do that is basically uh, if temps i is less than temps i plus 1. Okay, so this is not enough because we need to actually uh, see what is inside this struct. We have to see what is inside the temperature variable, right? So dot temp. And then if it is really the case that the struct, which is in a later position in the array, uh, has a higher temperature, then we want to make a swap, right? So how do we make the swap? We, we can make the swap in multiple ways, but the way that I found the most efficient is um, like so. We want to have a buffer variable that is going to be holding one of the uh, variables while we swap the next. Uh, once I write the code, it will be much clearer uh, to you on what I mean here. So I have an average temp struct and it's going to be a buffer. Uh, storage, right? So it's going to be like a storage. So first I want to buffer equals to uh, temps i okay and then we want temps i to be equals to temps i plus one and then we want uh, temps i plus one equals to buffer so this sequence of code actually swaps what is in temp i uh, with uh, temps i plus one okay so actually now if we uh, run this code and test this code we'll see that it swaps perfectly. This is basically the implementation of bubble sort. But I missed out something, which is if there is a swap, then we want the counter uh, to increment, right? And then uh, as over here as well, we want the counter to be equals to zero. So we want the counter to start from zero. And then after looping through all of this for loop, if the counter has not been incremented, then we know that we have made no swaps and then we'll come here and check that oh yes as long as the counter is not equals to zero sorry as long as the counter is so we swap until the counter is zero okay so we'll be continuously swapping all the way until the counter is zero because the counter is zero only when there is no swaps all right so that's that let me uh, make temps dot slash temps and we see that it has successfully been sorted. As you can see here, Phoenix is at the top, San Francisco is at the bottom, and it seems to be a perfect swar uh, sort. So now moving on to sorting all of the temperatures using selection sort. So selection sort is a little bit more compli complicated. And so how selection sort works is, um, once again, we have uh, the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So how selection sort is, we first want to look into uh, the 0th index, then we want to compare the 0th index with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, and basically, uh, we will be seeing which is the lowest temperature among all the other um, variables in this array right and then the lowest variable sorry in our situation the highest variable will be swapped with zero so for example let's use um, this situation right so in this situation we have Austin which is uh, 97 degrees and then what we want to do is loop through all of the other remaining um, temperatures so so we see that Boston, Boston is not higher than Austin, so we will not be storing Boston. 
Chicago, no. Denver, no. Las Vegas, yes. So we see that Las Vegas is in fact, um, uh, does in fact has a, have a higher temperature than Austin. So we see that, oh yes, so 4 is possibly going to be swapping with uh, 0. But then as we move onwards, we see that no, Phoenix has actually a higher uh, temperature. So now uh, we are thinking that Phoenix is going to possibly be swapping with uh, Austin, right? And then we reach the end and we see that, oh yes, Phoenix is in fact the highest temperature among all of the um, variables that are in here. So what we want to do is basically swap 8. So it's going to be 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 9. Because we swapped 8 and 0. So now that we are done with 8, we cross 8 out. And then we want to start looping from 1. So now we are starting at 1. And then we want to check all of the other arrays. So we'll be checking 2. And in this situation, Boston, 82 degrees. And then we see that Chicago is 85 degrees. So we see that, oh, Chicago uh, does have uh, an opportunity to swap with Boston. And then we loop through again. We see Denver, 90 degrees. So we know that Denver is probably going to be swapping. Then we go to Las Vegas. Then we see Las Vegas is actually a higher temperature. So we see that, oh, maybe Las Vegas is going to be swapping. Um, then we see Los Angeles. And we see that Los Angeles is, is lower temperature. So we ignore Los Angeles. Then we slowly move on, move on, move on, and then we see that, in fact, Las Vegas was the highest temperature that we have seen so far. And so we'll be swapping Las uh, Vegas with uh, Boston. So it's going to be 8, 4, 2, 3, 1, 5, 6, 7, 0, 9. And now that we are done with uh, the second, uh, this, and we'll be moving on to the next element in the array. And then we'll be checking number two's temperature with all the rest that we have here. All right. So now I think that I have explained enough. Uh, let me go on to actually typing the code. And in fact, um, here, Doug Lloyd has given us a pseudocode in on to how to actually implement selection sort. So um, let me implement selection sort here. So we want to repeat until there is no sorted uh, element and and if you guys noticed from my ex explanation and also the explanation of David Mellon and Doug Lloyd, you guys will realize that we will possibly be requiring a nested for loop because one for loop is going to be starting uh, from, for example, the first index in the array, and then the second for loop is going to be checking all the other elements that are in the array. Uh, if it doesn't click yet, don't worry. Uh, after writing the code, it will probably make much more sense. So for int i equals to zero, i less than uh, num cities, i plus plus. And we have that. Now we need to have another for loop and this time I'll be calling it j, j equals to zero, j less than num cities, j plus plus. So now uh, what we want to do is basically uh, have a variable that is storing the highest temperature uh, that we have recorded so far. So let's have Actually, we don't have to record the highest temperature that we have seen so far. We can just record the index of the highest temperature. So for example, it's going to be int uh, highest index. Okay. So when we start off the loop, we want the highest index to be i. So highest index equals to i. Right. Because we are, as you can see on my iPad again, as you can see, this arrow is increasing. So it started from the zeroth element, and then it went on to the uh, first element, then it went on to the second element. And so this is basically i. Okay, we initialize i to be the highest index. And then we loop through uh, using this, as you can see here, uh, this is basically the second loop. Okay, this is basically the second loop, and this is basically the second loop. And in this loop, we will be tracking uh, what is in fact actually the highest index. So what we want to do here is if temps uh, highest index dot temp is uh, less than uh, temps j dot temp. So now uh, here what we are doing is basically uh, looping through the rest of the array and we see and if we see that uh, one of the items that are in the rest of the array is 
uh, has a greater temperature, then we set uh, the highest index to be equals to J, right? And then at the very end of this for loop, we found what was the correct highest index. And then here we want to make the swap. So now how do we make the swap? Once again, we need to have a buffer variable that uh, will help us in making the swap. So let me uh, declare the buffer variable. So it's going to be uh, average temp buffer. Okay. And then uh, buffer is going to be equals to temps i. And then temps i is going to be equals to uh, temps highest index. I missed out the D here. I N D X. Okay. And then now the temps highest index is going to be equals to buffer. So that's how we actually do the swapping. And basically after we found what is the highest index, then we want to swap the highest index with the current uh, index that we are on, which is basically uh, this arrow uh, thing that I've mentioned uh, to you guys. Yeah, so this arrow, as you can see here. Okay, so um, let me just make make this again. Let me see if I'm missing any semicolons. Doesn't seem so. Dot slash times. Um, and there seems to be an error. Oh, okay. So, so okay, once again, um, we want the J to be starting from I plus one. Okay. So why that is, is because we want um, the J to be uh, looping from after the ith index. Because for example, um, in uh, this situation, you guys can see we are starting from zero, right? And then we want to, to be basically looping through the rest of the array. Okay. And here we are starting from one. We want to be looping through the rest of the array. Here we are starting from two. We want to be looping the rest of the array. We don't want to be starting from zero again and again and again because we know that um, those that are before the i, so for example, if the i is three, and those that are before the i will already be swap, uh, swapped. So make temps dot slash temps, and here you go. So now it's swapped, and that was just a small little bug. If you guys uh, don't get it, uh, maybe watch uh, some shorts by Doug Lloyd or maybe uh, recap um, your understanding of uh, uh, selection sort and bubble sort. All right. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys uh, understood what I was saying and benefited from this video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you guys have any questions, comment down below and I'll try my best to help you guys out and see you guys on the next video. Bye bye.